Forestry is New Zealand's third biggest export earner and what we have is a industry that was founded on breeding programs that started over 60 years ago. There's simply nowhere else in the world that can grow Pinus radiata like we can here in New Zealand. I'm Cathy Hargreaves and I'm a plant tissue culture scientist at Scion and what I'm going to show you here today is part of our plant tissue culture work and research and what we do here is we're interested in propagating material from the breeding programs. We know the material is really good and what we're trying to do is to get lots of this good material out into the forest to improve the value of our forests. And um, my research has been involved with developing processes to propagate this material, to make more of it, because when we do our crosses, we've only got a limited amount of seed, and what we want to do is have as many copies of that good breeding material in the forest as we can. So I've got here um, what we call an immature pine cone, now, what you may be really familiar with is when pollination happens, and this is when your co cars, the puddles, everything is coated in a cloud of yellow pollen. Well, at the stage that that's happening, this cone is only the size of my, my little fingernail, and it's only 16 months later that these small embryos are forming inside these seeds, and put them onto our, our tissue culture media. See these little lumps of tissue here? Well, when we have about a gram of that material, we know that we've got 10,000, and these plants will go out into the forest and they'll tell us how good our crosses were. So we know they'll be better than average, but we'll find out just how good they are. And then with some of this tissue, we do something a bit, a bit extra clever and it's what's made this propagation method so fabulous. We're able to take some of this tissue and what we do is we put it into sort of like antifreeze chemicals and we hold it in liquid nitrogen at minus 196 degrees, really cold and those little embryos are going to do nothing until we thaw them again. And um, what you can see here on this dish, there's lots of little wee green embryos forming. You'll be able to see something that now instead of looking like a white lump of sort of coconut rough, we now have some nice little plants. And these we can take through and we grow them first as little hedges in jars. And it's after that that they go out into field trials where we start to really work out how good our breeding decisions were. What will happen is if they're good, we can go back to the liquid nitrogen and produce lots more little embryos that are absolutely identical to the now five, perhaps ten-year-old trees in the forest. And this is important because we can't actually propagate the trees once they've proven themselves in the forest. So the only identical copies of those trees are what we have in liquid nitrogen. Our breeding work here at Science is becoming increasingly sophisticated. And what we're probably going to be able to do is have a sneak preview at the tissue. Back when it's, when it's really little, like this, when the embryos are very small, and we'll actually be able to tell what it's inherited from its parents. And as we're developing tools here with our breeding program, we'll actually be able to say, well, it's got these genes in it. We think it's probably going to show a lot of resistance to disease in the forest, or it's going to have super strong timber. And we'll be able to tell at this stage upon how good these trees are going to be. And of course, 
I've been giving you a lovely talk about Pinus radiata. We do this work with other species and science staff have travelled overseas to help other people develop protocols for their conifer species of interests. And um, I think really, you know, tree breeding will continue to be a huge part of improving our forests and their profitability in years to come. Mm -hmm.